Hi everyone, my name is Vince Gallman. It has been a while since I have made a video um, where I'm teaching something. I, I posted a video recently uh, of a song, but it's been, I think around five months since I've, um, since I've posted any, anything that is of me teaching something. And I, I felt it was time. I really needed to take that time off to go deeper into my, my heart, my soul, and to sink deeper into my writing and my music as well. There's something I, I feel that I want to speak to today, and that is the necessity for being in touch with our grief right now and how important grief is to to recognize the the truths, the dark truths, the um, horrific truths of our world. And what I want to say to you specifically is that our grief, our heartbreak confirms those difficult truths as real. Our heartbreak, um, certainly our shock, our disgust, our outrage, and I would say, especially our, our grief. Our grief is when things um, sink to an entirely deeper level of recognition. That's when it, it comes home more deeply into our bones, into our cells, into our heart. That's when we know, know that this is true. And so, our tears, our grief confirms that the pandemic is, was a pandemic, that the climate crisis is actually a climate crisis hoax and uh, that it's manufactured. Um, our grief confirms, our tears confirm just the amount of suffering of children in the world, how they are being used and abused, targeted, enslaved. Not just in trafficking rings, child rape trafficking rings, but certainly in our school system. The transgender movement is obviously, um, well, it's obvious to me and perhaps you, but it's, it's a uh, movement of abuse and it's a movement towards trans transhumanism. Transgenderism is a stepping stone towards transhumanism. There's so much, and, and I'm sure you know a lot of it, but what I want to say to you is that your heartbreak, our heartbreak, and it's certainly been true for me, hugely true for me, especially in the last three years, um, confirms this as true. I take truth to heart through my heartbreak. Truth is in the heart. I take it to heart. It is confirmed through each tear. And of course, how wonderful it is that the word tear is inside the word heart. Get rid of the H and you have the letters that make up the word tear. So our heart is designed to grieve. We have a heart, an emotional heart, not just a physical heart, not just a spiritual heart, not just a heart chakra, but we have an emotional heart, a beautiful emotional heart, a powerful emotional heart. And one of the gifts of the emotional heart is that it confirms to us. It confirms, it says, this is truth. Devastating it is. We take truth to heart through each tear, through each tear. It comes home to heart what has happened. It comes home. I want to give you an example I, I just wrote about the other day on my on my free ebook that I'll I'll link up in the description. And that is um <clears throat> imagine imagine a father who um who regularly hits his son. He regularly hits his son and his wife please she pulls out his shirt, she cries and he doesn't listen and the child is terrified. 
The father sees the terror in the child's eyes, let alone hears the cries, but continues on. But one day, something happens, and the father feels truth emerging in the heart. He feels it as heartbreak. And if that heartbreak could, could speak, it would say something like, what am I doing? What have I done? The father stops maybe mid-swing, turns, walks away, goes to his bedroom, closes the door, sits on his bed, puts his hands, his face in his hands, and he lets out a tear or two or three. He weeps, maybe for the first time since he was a child, since his father hit him or his mother hit him or his older sibling or aunt or uncle or grandparent hit him or school teacher or minister whoever it might be or society because society abuses us doesn't it in different ways if only psychologically certainly economically these days through its economic warfare so the father leans into his hands he feels ashamed and this is a healthy shame that's a good shame. That's a shame that says, I've done something wrong and I must stop. So what that heartbreak does, does what those tears do, what the grief does is it confirms the truth that he is hurting his son unnecessarily and that he must stop. And the tears expand that feeling, that knowing so the tears of the grief confirm it and the tears and the grief expand, expand that knowing. So what I'm saying to you is that there is a relationship between our ability to take in truth and to make new choices and how emotionally available we are, how in our body we are, how connected we are to our heart, to our feelings and particularly our grief. And we can apply this now to what's going on in our world as I like to do in my videos. And that, and that is that there's a disconnect between people and reality, such as how children are being targeted. There's a cognitive dissonance because people are disembodied because they are not connected to their emotional body. They aren't connected to their emotional heart that has something to say, that wants to be heard, that has truth to share and truth to feel. They're not connected. They're not listening. You see, within the word heart, get rid of the T and you have here. Get rid of the H and the T and you have ear, your inner ear. Take the word heart, pull the T out, and the T stands for truth. Hear truth. Hear it with your inner ear. Hear truth. Truth is in the heart. Tear is in the heart, your emotional heart. It is there, your tear, your grief, to confirm and expand what is true, what is real, disturbing as it is. But boy... Isn't that what courage is about? Isn't that what being a spiritual warrior is about? Taking truth to heart and being willing to be disturbed again and again and again. Because if we are not willing to be disturbed by the truth, we're going to be complicit to the lies. And then we're going to hand our children over to the lies and the liars. And next thing you know, it, our child is... Um, being mutilated under gender affirming care, right? Or getting jabbed because we don't want to take truth to heart. We don't want to feel disturbed. We don't want to feel. We don't want to rest in, let alone dip into our emotional body. Because for so many people in this world, and I certainly was one of them, 
you know, we've learned it wasn't okay. It's, it hasn't been safe for us to be in our body. Our body has been a dangerous place because we were terrified. We were terrified as terrified children. Just looking into your mother or father's eyes and seeing them as angry at you is traumatizing for little ones. That creates overwhelm in the system and without a parent to co-regulate, meaning their calm engenders your calm. Without that, the trauma sticks, you become traumatized, you feel overwhelmed, you feel scared, and the body feels uncomfortable, the body feels unsafe. It's not safe to be in the body. We have a survival psychobiology, which is our adaptation. We learn to disconnect. We learn to go up into our mind, into our thinking mind. We lose touch with our heart, which is where our discernment lies. And we have a hard time discerning good from good, right? Care from care, safe from safe. Safety, by the way, has now become one of the most dangerous words in the world. Right? This is good and safe for you. We're protecting you. But people who are not in touch with the truth within, they get fooled by these games, by the, the deception. They're having a hard time feeling truth within, they're having a hard time knowing what is truth. And this is the consequence of being disembodied. This is the consequence of a disembodied society who struggles, struggles, struggles to feel, especially, especially grief. So it's really important, uh, my friends, to, to honor, love, embrace each tear, your emotional body as a intelligence, as an intelligence, that confirms truth. Your emotions work closely with your heart, your emotional heart, and they're there to confirm truth. Whether it's grief, whether it's outrage, yeah, outrage is not a sacred emotion. Uh, sorry, outrage is a sacred emotion. Outrage is not, anger is not a negative emotion. Enough of that new age rubbish. Outrage, anger are sacred. It's what you do with them that make them negative. If you go beat someone up, that's negative, obviously. But outrage is an, though that is the emotion that confirms your inner no. That is the emotion that says, I've had enough. That's the emotion that allows you to set boundaries. It's the emotion that says, this is intolerable, this is unacceptable, and you will not touch my child. What a sacred emotion. Don't let anyone ever tell you that anger and outrage are anything but sacred. Your fear is sacred too. I could go on and on. I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole, but what I'm saying is, is, that, is that your emotional body works with your heart as one in an emotional heart, and it's there to confirm and expand truth. And the truth might be that this isn't true. That's a lie. Yes, you, political official, I know that the moment you start moving your lips, you're lying, which is the case so often these days, isn't it? So trust your emotional body, trust your not just that subtle feeling sense, that more subtle realm of instinct or intuition, but your emotions, your raw emotions, your raw humanity, your vulnerability, your tears. Let them inform you. Let them work at one with your knowing heart. Let them confirm what is true for you and what so many are awakening to now in the world. So thank you all and check out the the um, ebook link. It's a free ebook in my um, 
in my description because I go very much into detail on this in the, in the book. The book is called A Global Crucifixion, Truth, Heart, Truth, Heartbreak, and Humanity's Heroic Ascension into a Golden Age. And it's free. It's got tons and tons of links, uh, lots of good stuff in it. So check that out. And I want to thank you all for, for spending some time with me today. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Cheers. Bye.